Hello, I'm JW. At this time I'm going to have a look at testing the lamps, uh, all those uh, put together in the last video, or one of them at least, because they're all the same basically inside. So uh, lamps are actually now finished, so we'll have a look at testing these, mainly to make sure of course they're not going to have any sort of stray wires inside that are going to short out and possibly kill people, and obviously ensure that things do actually work. Now here is one of the lamps, so uh, let's remove the shade from that. And uh, this is one of the taller ones, I think we saw the uh, shorter one in the other video, but basically they're all pretty much the same. Now in terms of testing these, uh, there's two tests which uh, really need to be done here. The first one of which is to make sure that uh, the earth pin, which is the large pin on this uh, UK plug, is actually connected to the metal body of this lamp holder. And of course it obviously comes from there through the cable and up inside and should connect onto that uh, properly and securely. And then the other thing we need to check is the uh, line and neutral pins here, as in the where the power connects, are not connected to the metal body in any way. So we want to make sure there's a very high resistance, in fact, basically as high as possible, so that uh, when this is powered up we don't get any voltages appearing on the outside of this. So two uh, separate tests involved there. Now we do have here a specific machine for the testing, but uh, it is actually possible to use one of these to uh, do the two tests. Because basically this is going to measure continuity as it's got the setting here, and this actually uses a current of 200 milliamps, which is uh, usually good enough at least for testing stuff that's already been in service for a while. And again, it does have the installation resistance function, and we've got selectable voltages here, anything in this case from 50 up to 1000, and you'd normally use 500 volts for, say, testing that have been in use for a while. So if you select uh, 500 volts here, and then we can just check that there's no uh, damage insulation or any problems between that. So for this one we can just take the uh, two leads here, the red and the green ones, and we can check one onto the actual earth pin there. And then we can either check between the line and neutral separately like that, or we could actually just connect between the two pins like that and apply the test voltage. Now in this case there's nothing actually connected there, so we can just do it one at a time. So if we place it between the say earth and the neutral there. And then we can just do the test here by pressing the button. So we press the button there, voltage is 524 volts, and we've got the uh, insulation resistance there is greater than 500 mega ohms, so again that's perfectly fine. And again you normally do that between the earth and the line there, and same again, just press that and you'll see that pretty much the same result. Now for continuity we can use the same thing again, we've got a continuity setting here. We do need to zero the leads, so uh, just connect those together, and then press the uh, zero button, and that basically just allows for any resistance of the leads themselves, because of course we don't want to be measuring that as well as the thing that we've got. Then uh, just one lead will connect onto the earth pin there, as we had before. And just make sure that is connected to this, so we can just clamp on around the bottom of the holder there. Particularly easy, but we'll fix it there. And then, then just check we have continuity there. So it's coming out as pretty much uh, at zero or near it as there, sort of 0.03 or something, which again is perfectly fine. That's what we want. Now, in theory, these things should be less than 0 0.1 ohms. In most cases, they can easily be. Of course, you have something very long lead, it's uh, maybe higher than that, but uh, of course, this only in a couple of meters of flex there. so you would expect at or pretty much near zero. So you can use these if you've got one of these. So the main thing is it's going to test out the 500 volts and it's going to put say the 200 milliamps or so through the wires rather than a normal motorometer which might only put say a very small current indeed. Now 200 milliamps is all very well but uh, certainly things you've just assembled or reassembled or repaired or whatever, and in this case basically assembled from new, 200 milliamps is a bit crap because uh, if there was a, say a thin strand of wire just uh, barely connecting to something, 200 milliamps is going to pass through there, when in fact of course it's uh, really not particularly safe at all because if a fault occurred, a large current's going to flow and it could just bust that uh, piece of wire away before the fuse or whatever operated. So we've got one of these uh, machines here, this is a Claire A255. Now they don't actually make this one anymore, it's uh, many years old. You can get a similar machine which is called a B255 which is sort of the replacement for this one. But uh, nevertheless the uh, functions are certainly similar, and uh, this machine basically is designed specifically for the purpose, and therefore it's quite a lot quicker and easier to use than the uh, 
meter that we saw a moment ago. So for anything you're going to do any kind of quantity on, then uh, this is kind of the thing you want to get. And uh, this particular one has various uh, options here for the uh, different tests we've got. And of course it has the actual socket here on the front where we can just connect the appliance itself directly. So of course far more convenient. And it does the same two tests, so essentially if we look on the uh, front here, we've got the uh, actual earth continuity resistance, so uh, again it's a limit of 0.1 ohms for this setting, and it will actually display it on this meter here. And this also has the pass and fail lights, green and red, so normal operation is just a question of connecting up. You need to attach a lead here to the metal part, in case the uh, lamp holder in this case, and then it will either just say uh, passed or fail, and it additionally will display the resistance over there. And at the same time as doing that it also applies a voltage between line and neutral and the earth pin. And again that's selectable here we've got 1250 or 500 over this side. So it basically does all the tests at the same time, much quicker and easier. And the big difference with this machine is the fact that the current used to test the earth continuity, which basically passes through this green wire, is actually 25 amps not that uh, pathetic and useless 200 milliamps, so if there was a thin piece of wire or cobble just sort of barely making contact with the earth there, 25 amps through there is going to melt that away instantly, and of course that would show up as a fault. Now this is not the sort of thing you want to do on equipment on a regular basis, because of course shoving 25 amps through fairly thin wires can cause them to get rather hot, and if it was left on for a long time you could actually end up damaging things. And also note here that we've got the 500 volt one which we did earlier, that's for your normal sort of regular testing if you like, Basically it's about double the uh, RMS mains voltage. And this one also has the 1250 volts, which again we're going to use in this case because this is basically a new item. Some faults of course may not uh, show at 500, but they definitely will at 1250. So uh, just going to get this set up then, and uh, see what we can test with this. So I've got the item here, and we've plugged it into the front of the machine. And we're going to set the machine here to the standby position, so we don't get any unwanted voltages showing up. And we're going to turn on with the button on the front. And we're going to install this lamp into the device here, the just normal filament one. And we're doing this because the switch here, as we saw in the previous video, can't actually be moved to the on position unless something is actually in the top. Now, although it's horribly unlikely, there could be, in theory, a fault between one of these pins and, say, a metal outer part. Of course, that wouldn't show up unless it was in the on position. So we're just going to uh, put this lamp in here and again move to the on position. And then we need to attach the test clip here for the earth continuity to a metal part of the holder. And see this is a much bigger clip so it fits on much easier than those things we used a minute ago. And then we're going to select the appropriate test here. In this case we're going to use the 0.1 earth, or maximum of 0.1 ohms earth continuity. And we're going to select the 1250 volts one, mainly because so this is effectively a new item which uh, obviously hasn't in theory been tested ever before. The disadvantage of using 1250 all the time is that if you apply it to a cable often then of course they can eventually be degraded by it, but obviously for once only thing when it's new, not a problem. And again 0.1 ohms because this is a very short item, it's only a couple of metres in total. In theory you could use the 0.5, it would say a 20 metre extension lead or something, but obviously that's not applicable here. And then all we need to do is press the test button, and then we should see the green lights here for the continuity and the flash test there, or the insulation resistance. And also on here it should indicate the continuity resistance on the lower scale, so we're looking for something less than the point ohms, which is about there on the scale. So there we go, both green lights are on, and see it's well below the point 0.1 ohms as well. And again, we're not going to hold that on for a long time because bearing line 25 amps through here, and of course also through this, going to get uh, pretty warm. So let's confirm that it does actually function, and this thing has another function here where we can actually check that the thing actually works, which of course is kind of important because fairly pointless if it didn't. It will also confirm that then the fuse in the plug is intact, and also that the uh, wire through to this and the switch are all operating. So we can press the buttons here, and therefore we should see here the current it's using. It's going to be very small, this is only a 40 watt lamp here. This particular one has two options here, this is the one that actually does the test. And then additionally, if we hold this, it will change the scale from 15 amps to 1.5. So we're going to use both in this case. So we should just see the lamp uh, switch on there. And uh, press that one, then we can see the current here 
is sort of in the very uh, small range, obviously say only a 40 watt lamp there, so obviously a very small amount of current there. And the other thing we do is just make sure the switch operates, so if we turn it to the off position, of course it doesn't turn on, and of course it does in the other position. So that's a successful test there, so literally it is just a question of plugging in, attaching the uh, clip to it, and then pressing the button, and yes, it gives you a quick uh, red or green or pass fail on the front display. Now this machine does have a few other things it can do as well, which we're not doing here because this is a class 1 item. So basically the three here are for a set of tools and appliances, so that will be a class 1 item, so those that have exposed metal parts which are connected to the earth connection in the plug. And I actually have a 3 pin plug with that, so basically that is going to be used. But of course there's quite a lot of stuff now which is uh, double insulated as it says here, or basically class 2, so it doesn't have any connection from the plug to any exposed metal bits. It's basically made in such a way that any connection between those metal parts and anything else is allegedly impossible. Although having seen a fair amount of this stuff, uh, in some cases that's very far from the truth. So we've got these two around here, and in the case of those, if you were to say turn it around here, or to this one, there's no earth continuity test, so we don't need this because of course there is no earth uh, connection to the item, so of course that uh, green lead is not required. And of course in this case it doesn't obviously uh, test that either. But what you do need to get out is this thing in the back here. So we have this thing, which is a high voltage probe, and uh, this one so it has this big fat lead on it, and then it's got this button here on the end, so when you press the button the metal poking tip is pointing out there and it's exposed. And then the deal with these is that you would just plug in the appliance in here, as with the uh, lamp we saw before, press down the test button, and then using this one in uh, one hand there, you would then apply this to any parts on the outside of the equipment which were metal or possibly conductive. And the idea then is it's applying, in this case, 3000 volts between the end of this and the actual connections in the plug to make sure there's absolutely no connection between either the line neutral to whatever you're poking at the other end. And bearing in mind it's using 3000 volts, so you definitely don't want to be putting your fingers here. And obviously that could be extremely dangerous, and certainly unpleasant even if it wasn't. And again, this has two options here, one for 3000 and there's also a 3750 as well as an optional choice. And what should happen then is that there's absolutely no connection there, and then of course you'll find that uh, you can just go over the appliance, any metal parts, and nothing occurs. If there is any kind of connection there, then the uh, of course fail light will come on. This also has a horribly loud buzzer as well. Now the only thing here is this 10 milliamps button, and it's only applicable for the uh, earth connection type one. When you actually press this one here, the uh, flash test is actually limited to a current of 5 milliamps. If you want to increase that to the 10, then you can hold the button in and press the white one at the same time. Uh, so as you use the caution, because of course then you're applying quite a substantial amount of current through there at the selected voltage here, so that can of course be somewhat dangerous if you were to put your finger on it. But uh, you can use that and say it just has a uh, warning buzzer inside if you're using that option. But say normally the uh, standard one there is perfectly adequate. And there's nothing attached at the moment, so you see it does actually show as a fail, obviously with the uh, thing way over basically to the far more than the resistance needed. So look there, a bit of uh, testing for these things. And so normally it is just a question of plugging in, attaching the lead and pressing the button. Now of course, uh, what's wrongly called PAT testing, which is basically portable appliance testing with another word of testing after it, is some kind of degraded industry where people go around to the various offices and whatever and basically plug in a machine and stick little labels and everything saying all is well. Now in reality, uh, the bulk of that kind of thing should be visual inspection and making sure there's no broken parts and things are actually complete and the wire isn't snagged, scuffed and all the rest of it, and opening the plug to see that the correct fuse is installed and a whole pile of other stuff. But unfortunately it uh, seems to have been degraded to an industry where people go around to these places and charge you 25 pence to shove it in a machine and put a sticker on it. So kind of pointless uh, endeavour there, which is why I don't do that kind of thing. But uh, nevertheless, uh, certainly important to test things you either made or have refurbished or reassembled, because although you may have been careful to do it, there's obviously the possibility of uh, some stray wire got where it shouldn't be, or even things like say the uh, cable was a bit defective or the lamp holder has some problem. So that's it for this time. And until next time, thanks for watching.